Another episode of Web Talk here on RTV on rfills.com. Catching up with Reading Phillies shortstop Troy Hanzawa. Troy, first month of the season winding down. What would you make of your effort in April for the Reading Phillies? Um, it was just, uh, I think the whole team just did good. You know, our pitching, pen, defense, and offense, everything just went together fine. There were a handful of clutch situations that you found yourself in in the first couple weeks. In particular, that game on April the 20th against the Akron Arrows really helping the Kia rally that sent the Reading Phillies on to victory in a 10-inning game. What do you think enabled you to come through in those types of situations? Um, just some, you know, I mean, I've been feeling good this month at the plate, so just feeling confident, you know, getting a pitch that I could be able to handle, not going outside the zone or anything like that. But, I mean, he just fastball away, and I just was able to put the bat on it. What do you think it was maybe about the limited time you spent up here at AA last season? Just getting a sense of it, a few at-bats at this level that might have affected your mindset starting out this season at the AA level for the first time in your career. Um, it's definitely an advantage just to be able to come up here and see how the guys did it last year and um, got to go to playoffs with them for you know just a couple games. and um, It's just, just being able to familiar, familiarize yourself with um, the field and the players and just the atmosphere, I guess. Was that something that lingered in your mind throughout the off season, as far as a goal to shoot for coming out of spring training camp? Um, not really. I mean, I'd want to come back and play back here, and um, it's just you know the fans from what we've seen is great. The coaching, you know, everything has been good. All right, so you make your way to baseball town right now, originally via the island of Oahu in Hawaii. What was life like there growing up? It was awesome. I mean, I, I love it back home. Um, I always like to go, um, you know, back in the off season and, you know, do my thing over there. But it's, it's a great place to grow up. Definitely. What were certain aspects of the culture that made the biggest impression upon you? Um, it's just um, Hawaii, we're kind of laid back. You know, we, we do things at a different pace. But um, it's not saying that we're lazy or anything like that, but... When we have a downtime, we, we take advantage. So then where does your competitive drive come from when you've got to put that into play out there on the field? Um, I think it's just a part of me, you know, just playing at this kind of level, I think you have to have that drive, you know, that, that desire to win. Spear fishing, an outlet for something to channel some sort of energy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I grew up doing it. Um, you know, it's a great way to just, you know, relax and have some fun. So for any amateur spear fisherman out there, any helpful hints, keys, secrets? Um, I'm, I'm not the best, so I mean, <laughs> I'm, I, when I go back, I try, to, I try to get into it just to, you know, just hang out with friends and, um, you know, just have a good time. Your college career began at home at the University of Hawaii, then went to junior college in Arizona before ending up at San Diego State. Two pretty big names were a part of the program with the Aztecs at that point in time. Tony Gwynn, head coach there, and of course the great Steven Strasburg. What was that like working with the two of them? Um, it was a great opportunity for me just to have uh, Coach, um, coach Gwynn, uh, you know, just being able to pick his mind about certain things, hitting and just the pro level in general. I mean, it was just a great opportunity. And um, Strasburg, just a great kid, you know. He he worked he worked really hard, you know, to get where he is now. And um, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him. As far as working with Tony Gwynn, was there something, whether it was a piece of advice, some insight that he gave you that made you think, wow, you know, this is nothing that I ever would have thought of before that maybe he made look so easy out there during his career? Um... He makes everything sound pretty easy at the plate. Um, some uh, guys like us, we kind of have to, you know, work through it a couple times here and there, and um, trying to fight through it. But he always tries to simple, simplize um, hitting and, um, you know, just your approach at the plate. And sometimes I think you have to, you have to uh, slow things down and um, let the game, um, I guess, progress as it goes. So as a professional, your path to the Reading Phillies somewhat moving at a parallel pace to that of your current skipper, Dusty Wathen, with him in 2009 with the Lakewood Blue Claws, the better parts of the last two seasons with the advanced single-A Clearwater Threshers. 
What is one thing about Dusty Wathen that you've gotten to know over time that maybe the outsiders might not have a sense of? Um, I don't know if there's anything he hides back there, but um, he he's always there to um, you know drive you when you need it. He's always there to listen to you when you need help with something, you know, on and off the field. Um, but other than that, he's you know we kind of. We kind of know what each other are thinking and what what we want, you know, want to do here and there. And um, it's just, I mean, it's been great playing for him over the past years. So I'm happy I'm, you know, back with him here. In addition to the production you've provided, the Reading Phillies, the plate, the defense has been really solid out there at shortstop. Of course, a guy who's now up with the big club occupied that spot for the majority of the last two seasons. How conscious are you of that? Uh, the uh, position you're assuming who played there previously and the story that he's kind of taken to get to where he's at right now in terms of Freddie Galvis. Oh, I'm, I'm happy for Freddie. He's a great guy, you know. Um, he's, he's a great player. I've seen him play. I really haven't got the opportunity to play on his team, um, per se, but um, I'm just glad, you know, I can come up, you know, right behind him and um, hopefully something happens here or there, you know, where I, I'm able to get up to Philly or, you know, somewhere else and, um, you know, be able to put up some production numbers like he does. Lastly, what are your goals for the remainder of the 2012 season? Um, just, you know, keep it going. Um, we've been doing great. Um, just winning ball games and swinging the bat, playing defense, pitching. Um, it's just, you know, it's a long season, so I hope we can just, you know, keep it going for uh, the rest of the year. It has been a really solid start for Reading Phillies shortstop Troy Hanzawa. Troy, best of luck keeping it going. All right, thank you. Thanks for logging on to rphills.com for the latest installment of Web Talk here on our TV.